you ever talk about something out loud like a upcoming trip to Iceland or a new mattress only to see an ad for it later that same day? You didn't Google this. You didn't text anybody. You just verbalized it and all of a sudden you're seeing ads everywhere. When this happens, most people joke that their phone is listening, but the truth is actually weird. In this video, I'll be explaining exactly how it's not the words you say, but it's actually the sounds around you, inaudible to you, that may trigger these advertisements. Ultrasonic tracking uses high frequency sound beacons that you can't hear, but which your phone can't. And these tones can be hidden anywhere, in TV ads, in podcasts, probably even in YouTube intros, although I promise I didn't put one here. You can think of these ultrasonic tones as sort of whispers that your phone picks up on when you, say, watch a certain video or walk by a particular retail display. And this technology enables something called device stitching. Basically, device stitching is a process where, say, your phone is linked with your computer, with a smart TV, with your smartwatch to create one single profile. That's a profile of you, the consumer, and it's known as your advertising ID. It's essentially your unique digital footprint. Every one of us has one of these unique footprints so really fingerprints is a better analogy here. You have one, I have one. Now yours might be more detailed than mine, it might be less detailed, but the reality is that you have one that is unique and specific to you, and that is fed into your overall identity graph, which is maintained by giants like LiveAmp, Oracle, Newstar, among others. Even credit bureaus like Experian and Equifax maintain detailed identity graphs on American consumers. Why? Because having these identity graphs makes it way easier to sell us stuff. Of course, here's a hypothetical example. On Monday morning, your phone might pick up an ultrasonic beacon and emitted from a commercial for, say, a car. On Tuesday, you use a different device, say your laptop, to look at different cars. On Wednesday, you decide that you want to go check out, a, say, a Toyota in person, and you go to a dealership, and both your phone and your smartwatch log your GPS location. On Thursday, you check insurance rates on, say, a tablet. So here we have four different devices logging four seemingly different activities, right? Well, your identity graph is where these dots are connected. And once these connections are made, advertisers know that you are in the business of shopping for a new car. So essentially, this is just ad targeting, and I'm not necessarily morally opposed to it. In fact, I welcome the idea of getting served better advertisements. I still get served irrelevant advertisements for things that I'll never buy on a regular basis. So as somebody who appreciates the occasional good, highly targeted ad, I can't say that this is all bad, but it certainly is a little bit creepy and it speaks to the comprehensiveness with which advertisers are able to understand us and create these unique advertising IDs. Just take a moment to think of all the data that you're sort of leaking behind you on a daily basis. You're leaving this trail, these breadcrumbs that advertisers can then follow and package together to create a unique profile that represents you specifically and your unique hopes, dreams, desires, and fears. If this sounds a little weird, go ahead, check out my data deletion blueprint. That's going to be linked up in the video description below, and that will give you some steps you can take to permanently erase yourself from the internet. And yeah, it is going to ask you for your email. Sorry. Welcome to the modern internet, I guess. As I started making this video, I really started to wonder how did we get here in the first place? And to answer that question, we have to rewind back to the 2010s. In the mid 2010s, companies like Silverpush started to pioneer this tracking technology. You can think of the 2010s as sort of the, the wild west of ad tech. There were a lot of companies moving fast, breaking things, not asking for consumer consent. The result of all of this is that by 2010, researchers analyzing Android apps found that 234 of them were emitting ultrasonic beacons. And of course they weren't telling users why. And these apps, many of which were utility apps. So if you ever downloaded like a sketchy Android flashlight app and it asked for microphone permissions, well, now you know why. Of course, this wasn't limited to just apps. Stores were also experimenting with emitting these ultrasonic tones. The purpose of which, of course, was to link your online identity with your IRL behavior. If you followed ad tech or marketing developments over the past 10 years, you might know what happens next. It's a new law called GDPR, short for General Data Protection. The idea is privacy by default. Instead of being required to dig through menus to opt out of handing your data over, companies will now be required to ask you to opt in. You see the impact of GDPR every time you visit a website and you get that cookie consent pop-up. Websites now needed explicit consent for cookie tracking, and of course, a lot of users opt out of this. Then in 2021, Apple launches iOS 14.5, which deals the advertising agency another blow. iOS 14.5 made app permissions opt out, not opt in by default, and 85% of users or thereabouts said no. And this is all happening at the same time that browsers in Safari, in Firefox, in Google Chrome are starting to kill third-party cookies. So in just a few years, the ad industry is affected we hobbled. It becomes a lot more difficult for them to collect information about you. But of course, ads didn't disappear, they just evolved, which brings us to where we are today. Today, ultrasonic tracking is alive and well. It's just a little bit less blatant. It's used for things like event check-ins and what the industry calls proximity marketing. And it's not just ad tech companies who are aiding and abetting this creepy behavior. No, it's actually credit unions like Experian and Equifax as well. In fact, Experian has dozens, hundreds, even thousands in some cases of data points for each American. And not only are we being tracked, which is creepy enough, but our future activities 
tendencies and behaviors are being actively predicted. Which brings me to where is this all going? Right now, these systems are sometimes linked and they're sometimes separate. So your Alexa, for example, might be sitting alone in a silo. It might not be linked up with your broader advertising ID, but it does already have the ability to analyze your vocal stress patterns. I think you can see where all of this is headed and that's into a future where there's integrated real-time behavioral tracking and not just tracking, but actually prediction. Maybe you're stressed at work, you're nervous about something, you ask Alexa for directions to the nearest CVS. Your Apple Watch detects a spike in your heart rate. As you walk out your front door, your ring doorbell analyzes your gait and confirms that, yeah, you are stressed, you're in a state of nervousness. As you get into your electric vehicle to drive to CVS, sensors detect that you're driving somewhat erratically. And you can see now how all of these different data points confirm your emotional state. You're stressed, you're nervous, you're harried, and you're going to a commercial location to buy something. Of course, this is a goldmine for advertisers, so as you pop on your podcast to relax, maybe you're served a hyper-targeted ad for, say, a bottle of wine available, coincidentally, at the CVS you happen to be driving to. In this world, this is no longer just surveillance, it's really real-time behavioral prediction. And this brings me to one of the big questions that kept coming up as I was making this video, and that question is, how much autonomy do we actually have? Unfortunately, the answer to that is not much. I'm not sure that we have as much autonomy as we think we do. When you're at home stressed and you make that decision, or what seems like a decision to drive to CVS, you feel empowered. You feel as if you yourself have made that decision. But what if that decision is really just the result of impulses that have been poked and prodded by the ad tech industry? Manipulated, in other words. As much as the marketer in me wants to give you a set of five simple things you can do today in order to stop this from happening, I think the reality is we're already sort of the, 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 the frog, the proverbial fro frog being boiled in a pot of water. This technology is advancing quickly, and by the time I recommend a new tactic for you to try out, it will probably have been rendered obsolete in this ever-escalating war between ad tech and privacy advocates. So there's not a single simple solution, but you can try a few things. You can revoke microphone access for apps that don't need it. Be especially careful if you're on Android, it is much less privacy respecting than iPhone. You can go ahead and do an app audit on your phone, go ahead and delete any apps that you haven't used in, say, a month. And, and this is probably my biggest recommendation for the video, you can turn your phone off. You can go places without it. Now, I don't know what this is really going to do to stop advertisers from surveilling you, but I do think it's going to go a long way towards giving you better mental health and greater peace of mind. It's exhausting knowing that we are tracked by advertisers as much as we are, but it's also exhausting when you really think about it, how much tracking, how much self-tracking we're doing. Do you really need to know your heart rate variability at every second of the day? Do you really need to know whether you ran five miles or 5.2? Do you really need to receive 24 seven email notifications via your Apple smartwatch? Opting out from time to time, it's empowering. It's refreshing. And I recommend you do it right now. Go ahead, get out there, touch some grass. See you next time.